this time, we're now being joined by our crew in Los Angeles, California, for an update on the 92nd Academy Awards, also known as the Oscars, of course. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Hello, good morning. Hi. Judita, good, good morning. Good morning, Good morning, good, yes. good morning team. Good morning, good morning, good morning show. Good morning, Judita. Leila. Good morning, Doc. How are you? Yes, good we're good here. Yeah, well, I mean, I see you guys are having fun good out morning. there in LA. So, um, What's your take? What has been happening? We've seen some of the results. Parasite seems to have done much better than expected. Made history. Much better than 1917, and uh, even much better than once upon a time in uh, Hollywood. Uh, but um, what's your take on what you have observed and the results that have been announced? I think this was a particularly, I think it's a watershed moment for the Academy Awards because first of all, on the morning show, on Arise News, I made the call last year saying that every year the Academy Awards has a surprise. We saw it when Moonlight took Best Picture over La La Land. We saw it when Liza Minnelli took the Best um, Actress over Diana Ross. We've seen when Grace Kelly took it over her mother, Judy Garland. They always have one moment that's a surprise that everyone talks about. And I said it on the morning show that it's going to come by way of either Dolore Gloria, Parasite, or The Lighthouse, and it's happened with Parasite. This is a South Korean film, the first one nominated. It was nominated for four Academy Academy Awards and won all of them. And particularly, it got the two biggest ones, Best Director and Best Picture. It's a film in a foreign language. We always know that in Hollywood, all the great films that have come from foreign cinema, they wait for an English adaptation because the industry doesn't have the investment or belief in the American audience that they will adapt to something foreign that isn't in English. Parasite represents an understanding of film transcending the issues of diversity, inclusion, and representation. Considering that, uh, you know, you have in Parasite an almost non-white cast, and then you have uh, little women, which also feature the majorly female characters. And the concern had been about female representation and also, uh, you know, racial representation. We see that, we say this is an attempt to address that challenge I... or not. Absolutely. I do think that in a very, in the true, the true Oscar ham-fisted way, they're trying to make amends. Because when you think about it, there was a lot of presence of black <coughs> singers, um, black performers, black presenters. They were trying to kind of shoehorn diversity into it to say that there is a presence of them, even though not a recognition of them. So when you had um, Parasite winning across the board, this is done on votes. And like they said, this is a film that is loved by both viewers as well as the the purists of film, the auteur, auteur filmmakers, people who really like the art of filmmaking. So you can justify all of its wins, but I do agree with you that it's now a much better look for um, the, the Academy to say that, well, in this year that we were blamed for not having enough diversity, a film that was an, a best actress for Sayonara starring along Marlon Brando, there's never been an Asian actress that's won since. This is a very good look. So they can hide behind this with the, when it comes to the backlash of diversity. So I do agree with you there. But on merit itself, if it's a meritocracy, Parasite does deserve the wins it got. Well, this is always the issue about excellence surpassing every other consideration. But yes, ham-fisted indeed. To use their parlance, they had a lot of representation of minorities, but in supporting roles. And the fact that Martin Scorsese was overlooked. So there was a recurrence of them paying homage to him and what he's done to influence so many of the people in this room. When Bong Joon-ho said the quote of um, the most per speech at the BAFTAs, but he did. One thing that I've noticed about when, he's reached, when he put out the performance in The Joker, he's got into a stage in his personal life that is synchronizing with his professional life. He's at peace. He's confident. Same as we saw with Brad Pitt. And one Amazing. I mean, we all know where we were when River Phoenix died, and it's, it was such a tragedy because he had so much promise. So it's amazing to see his brother take that legacy and run with it. I'm sure he's looking down on his brother and is extremely proud. Absolutely. And also, uh, Judita, before Absolutely, we let... Absolutely, because um, he said that he only got into acting because of that. Yeah. 
Absolutely, Judita. And before we let you go as well, I, I wanted to bring Netflix into this. And I think this may also interest you um, because some industry competitors have said that Netflix spends about 70 or they have spent about $70 million basically trying to campaign for the Oscars. Now, we don't know if this figure is completely true, but that's what's out there, right? And that's higher than what most studios spend. Yet, even though Netflix have gotten nominations and some small wins, they've never really hit it big and gotten those big wins do you what do you think there is still this gap between the digital streaming world and traditional film and if so how do we start to bridge this gap if we do want to what, what are your thoughts on this as a whole I think it's a two-pronged attack with Netflix. I can see what they're doing, which is, you know when you feel someone is doing an injustice, the, rather than be go on the attack, what you do is position yourself in a place where you can truly expose the totality of the injustice, and then you become a glorified victim, almost a martyr. That is what they've done. When any film goes out to general release, there is always a budget for marketing. Netflix said they always had this budget for the Oscars rollout. And remember that they had Four films that went into contention for awards. That was The Irishman, The Two Popes, Marriage Story, and Dolomite. They'd already budgeted for this. So when you, th when you think about the actual um, disparity between the awards, actually recognizing them for wins, and what they're actually getting in actual wins, when you say nominations and wins, it's understandable that they would feel bad that they're not getting the recognition they deserve. Or the Oscars is being shown up for being bullheaded about not embracing them. Roma cleaned up last year. So the Oscars is very, there's a bone of contention about them making, being made to feel that Netflix is going to clean up every year. They want to hold on to that bastion of classic filmmaking on celluloid, on, st on studios. Streaming represents digital, but that is the future. The music industry has had to shift towards streaming because that is the future. Until you speak the language that the general population speaks, which is Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other streaming services, and we know we've, we've got a rise play coming, you have to speak a language that speaks to the future or you will pale into insignificance. So although they spent a budget that they always intended to spend, it's not a loss to them because they're showing the world that the Oscars is not embracing the future. Well, I mean, Netflix didn't do badly at the end of the day. They still got best documentary. They got uh, best supporting actor. But let's talk about fashion, uh, something that I see that you guys are also representing uh, Arise News on the red carpet. You know, I've not been joking with at all. Um, I mean, what's your assessment of the uh, fashion there from Joaquin uh, Phoenix <laughs> wearing uh, the same uh, familiar attire to uh, Spike Lee uh, wearing, you know, uh, a dress that uh, pays yes. tribute to Kobe Bryant and uh, Charlize Theron, you know, uh, you know, uh, being very stylish. What, what, what's your take on the uh, red carpet? I'll comment later when you guys return on how you guys also have been part of that fashion game on the red carpet. <laughs> Hello, Judith, are you with me? I think absolutely. I think um, what they've done is that they've used the... Yes, I am. I think that what they used the red carpet for, yet again, it was a political statement because we saw that um, the representation of fighting for the environment, which is something Jane Fonda has been on her preaching box for, and commendably so, was wearing sleeves. And a lot of the um, gowns on the red carpets this year had sleeves. So even if they weren't a natural part of the design, they were attached. And that was something that was celebrated. And you mentioned Joaquin Phoenix. He has worn the same Stella McCartney tuxedo to every award ceremony because he, is taught, he, he believes in sustainability and renew, renewability, which was also part of his acceptance speech. So one thing that these... We do always kind of roll our eyes when the glitterati try to get on their soapbox. But when they practice what they preach, it kind of has more resonance. And what they're showing is that this push for the environment, this push for the survival and unity of people is something that is the antithetical to what the president, Donald Trump, is doing. So they are using that platform to show that the unity that is being avoided and being um, campaigned against from the top, which is the presidency, is something we won't allow within the, within the halls of power that we have, which is entertainment. So I applaud them for doing that. So Fashion Y, for one thing, it's whimsical, it's fun, it's throwaway, it's something they are using to send a message. These are entertainers who exist to make us happy, but through that happiness that they give us, they can also make us mindful and pensive about the things that are truly important. So it's a great thing. Well, since you mentioned Trump, I'm going to sound like him for a second. Are the ratings in for the Oscars? Because you did say 
the, there's a soapbox effect, and sometimes the public don't want to hear it.